Greetings Nimrods. So I thought it was about time we do a video on Frogs 240. He got this 240 you know, about 14 months ago and a couple things have happened since then and now. One obviously is we had a pandemic so that kind of slowed down our progress a little bit. The uh, second thing was uh, my wife also got a 240 which we had to get on the road first and uh, obviously there's some videos on that you can see if you would like. So we needed to make a little place to work on this because uh, the driveway wasn't cut in the winter months. So we've been picking away at making a hoop house in the backyard and that's been pretty successful. Uh, one thing we had to do is uh, make a way of jacking it up on the ground since it's not a level surface. So we uh, poured some level pads, uh, you know, dug some holes in the rocky New England earth here and poured some concrete in the forms. And these are placed exactly under the lifting points of a 240 sedan. Um, probably outsmarted herself a little bit, you know, it would have been wiser to make these pads a little bit bigger because when it came time to get the 240 positioned over the four lifting points, it proved to be a little difficult. And uh, next time we do this, uh, we'll make those pads a lot bigger and make it a little easier to drive up and over and get it positioned correctly so we can get the jacks right underneath the uh, lifting points. Or the... So, uh, at any rate, some of the things we did, our frog pretty much did before we even moved the car is they replaced that door on it, obviously, that had been pretty boogered up. Um, there you see it up on the, lift, up on the jack stands. It does work pretty well, actually, um, and it's nice that it's dirt under there, not uh, driveway, because it's uh, much more comfortable. You can make yourself a little nest under there. So there's the door that originally came with it, and the uh, previous owner had tried to weld and repair the hinges, which was, uh, I don't know what he was doing, but he pretty much wrecked the, the door. So we had to go to the boneyard and get a new door for it, and Frog got that all lined up pretty well on his own. He's proud of him. One of the other things that this came with was a new gas tank in the trunk. It was not installed, so we had to install that, and new sending unit and everything, and had to patch one of the uh, lines uh, underneath as well and get a new battery for it. And then one other thing we needed to do to be able to get this started was get another starter. Um, so once all that was done, we were able to, to start it technically, but uh, we also found that the shifter connection is automatic, but it's got the shifter connection that goes to the transmission. Uh, the end was rotted off of it, so we had to weld up a little uh, fabricated end for it and get that back into position, so that works well now. It was our first official job with the welder we got, and uh, so it started. And uh, here we go, this is the live first startup video. One thing we found though that uh, it was shaking like crazy in there, so we then immediately changed the engine mount and that fixed that. Uh, made quite a difference actually. Um, they didn't appear to be broken or anything, but uh, they definitely were worn out. So we got it going. Of course, we have no brakes because we already took the uh, front rotors off and let them out. And so it was a heck, heck of a time positioning it up in, into, the, into the greenhouse uh, with no brakes. And we got to work in earnest with it working on the exhaust, which was fairly well butchered as well. They cut off the catalytic converter as the old exhaust muffler, at least one of them, pulled out and it's all garbage. So between uh, the wife's 240 and some other parts we scrounged and we're buying some others, uh, we got a complete exhaust to put in here. We had to weld a, a new end on the pipe going to the catalytic converter because they just hacked it off. So we did that. <clears throat> of course, we broke off one of the studs on the manifold and had to, to drill and retap and put all new studs in. We're working on that. That's going to be no problem. And uh, same thing with the uh, actually the manifold itself. We had to, they welded the uh, the studs going to the downpipe on that for some reason. All three of those I had to retap and put new, new studs in. And new rotors, new calipers on the front. We got it for the back too. We just haven't put them on yet. <clears throat> we've got we've got plenty to do on this. Uh, we were taking out the uh, the inline fuel pump, or the, I'm not sure what you call that, if it's really a pump or not. There's one in the tank as well. We had to take this one out and change out the filter of the pump and rebuild the bracket because that's all boogered up as well. Uh, and then behind that, we found a nice surprise. This, 
may have been seen one of these before, but apparently, uh, I'll zoom in on it here. This is a, uh, I guess it's a brake line pressure regulator. I guess it drops down the pressure on the rear brakes so they don't lock up. And uh, we're going to have to find one of those, and it's not looking easy. Um, so we'll keep chipping away at this, and we'll keep chipping away at our uh, Rock Auto magnet collection. I think we'll get the fridge covered before we're done with this. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Nimrod wants you to subscribe. Happy hunting, Nimrods.